All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the August 13th, 2024 meeting of the East Long Meadow Town Council. It's now 6 p.m., and I'll call the meeting to order. If we could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. Now take a moment of silence to reflect on all the events that went on both at home and abroad. Thank you. All right. Uh, first item is just in accordance with Mass General Law. This meeting is being video recorded by Elka. And if there's anyone else in the audience, if you can identify yourself. Seeing none, we'll move on to public comments. Is there anyone that would like to make a public comment before the council if it's not further item on the agenda? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to council comments. Does any council have a comment? All right, seeing none, we will move on to the <laughs> report. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so, uh, Construction uh, continues at the high school. Um, most of the enabling work is starting to take shape. Um, the new parking area has been installed uh, in the horseshoe. Um, you know, obviously a lot of the, the construction that's happening now is so that they can actually do work when school is in session. Um, so they're getting a lot of that squared away. The um, access road to the back of the building where obviously most of the construction will take place. Uh, has been installed. Um, the school building committee recently voted um, to submit the 60% design to the MSBA. Uh, that was at our meeting on July 23rd. Um, I believe we've already received comments back from the MSBA on that. So that's moving along. Um, construction's complete on, uh, aside from a few punch list items on the sidewalks on Pleasant Street um, from Indian Spring to Porter. Um, and on Hamden Road um, from Parker to Angela Lane. Uh, our contractor, DP Moraes, obviously worked very swiftly and efficiently um, to complete the whole project in a matter of weeks. Um, so nice job to them and, and the DPW for uh, fostering the project. Um, paving's also underway uh, on Ridge Road, East Circle and North Circle. We had a water main project there a couple of years ago. Um, we installed some drainage. Uh, there's been quite a bit of uh, <laughs> pavement deterioration from the water in that area. So um, DPW, uh, before we got the paving contractor on, had installed some French drains in our right of way uh, adjacent to the pavement. Um, so uh, Warner Brothers is now in there milling, overlaying, uh, adjusting structures as needed, um, and installing curbing. Um, so I think we're looking to be substantially complete by the end of the month. And then obviously my favorite phrase from DPW, weather permitting, subject to change. Um, we have hired a new HR director, um, Audra Staples. Uh, her first day is next Tuesday, August 20th. Uh, she uh, comes to us uh, from Westcom, um, but she also previously worked in HR for months and in Longmeadow. So quite a bit of um, municipal HR experience, which was sort of our main focus. Um, as with most, most things, industries on the municipal side are different than the private side and, and HR is no different. So we really stress that uh, as a requirement. Uh, so we're happy to have her as part of the team. Um, I can step down as HR director, which I'm sure everyone's happy about. Uh, so yeah, pop in and see her after uh, Tuesday next week. Um, she's out, she'll be at uh, 382 North Main. Um, okay, Jamie, you have the tissues ready? Um, so we have to, uh, unfortunately, well, I guess we're just gonna say he's retiring. Don Mackey after uh, 19 years of service to the town of East Long Meadow at Elkat. 16 of which at the direct as the director. Um, I won't, I won't go into to too much and we don't have time to discuss uh, all of Don's accomplishments and what he's done for our community. 
personally, professionally. Um, and I know everyone's going to miss him. Um, he, he is an intelligent, caring, thoughtful individual. Um, and one of my favorite conversationalists of all time, if you ever have three or four hours to kill, stop. by. <laughs> yeah. Um, honestly, congrats, Don. Um, I don't need to be behind the screen. <laughs> um, I'm watching you, but you can't see. Yeah. I, <laughs> congrats. I, I sincerely uh, look forward to the next time we get to chat. Me too. Absolutely. Thank you. Congrats. Um, we also recently reached an agreement uh, for the taking of 382 North Main Street. Um, the the documents of that uh, agreement are in there. We're in a sort of a due diligence area here with uh, a updated um, appraisal, uh, further inspection, um, and sort of putting all the administrative things together so that um, you have all the information you need to make a vote. Most likely at our first meeting in September. Um, almost everything has sort of been vetted out at this point. Um, it'll just be putting everything uh, in order so that you guys are are set to vote uh, in September. Um, we got up some upcoming events. Uh, Center Town District discussion uh, is that Thursday, August 15th, uh, 6 to 8 p.m. at East Village Tavern. Um, so the uh, the conversation continues uh, uh, about the center town district. So feel free to stop in and say hi. And uh, you know we're still still want everybody's input. So the more input we get, the more we can uh, put a, put out a product for the entire community. So uh, cultural council's uh, arts and brew festival uh, August twenty fourth. Uh, 12 to 5 p.m. at 445 Baldwin Street, uh, which is uh, brew practitioners. Um, that has historically been a great event. So if you have time on the 24th, head over there. Uh, magicians, uh, art, music, live music, a lot of a lot of live music, I guess. So um, head down and enjoy yourself on the 24th. Um, and we have coffee with the town manager here, uh, September 4th, 10.30 a.m. Um, we just a couple of updates that I didn't submit that have happened. Uh, Kim and everyone from finance has been working diligently to close out FY24, which was we got the email at 4.48 this afternoon. Uh, no issue whatsoever. Uh, so our auditors will be in uh, final week of August, first week of September. Um, and we most likely, I think we looked at the schedule last year, we need revenue numbers for September 30th, then we can submit for free cash certification. And that probably will take place the first meeting in October. I'm not sure what the date is, but, uh, I think it was the 11th last year. So that, that seems like that lines up. Um, and that's all I got for tonight. Great. Thank you, Tom. Does yeah. anyone have any questions? Thank you. All right, seeing none, we will move to communications, correspondence, and announcements. First item is a proclamation for Don Mackey on behalf of the town council. So, of course, as Tom alluded to, uh, Don Mackey has been working for the town for quite a long time, and especially with LCAT and presenting the meetings to the public in an accessible format and getting the information out there, which has been amazing. But he also has a rich history before that, both in art and writing. And he will continue to do so with the East Long Meadow Film Festival that he's co-founding beyond retirement and uh, also producing a short feature film. So he will definitely be active in the community and around to move forward. Mm -hmm. So on behalf of the town council, be it hereby known to all that the town of East Long Meadow offers its deepest appreciation, best wishes to Donald J. Mackey for his 19 years of service and dedication to LCAT and 16 years as director. 12 years as organizer of National Night Out, four years as broadband committee chair, and as many accomplishments and contributions in the art and design in industry dated this 13th day of August, 2024. Uh, the town council, on behalf of myself, Connor Roche. Thank you, Connor. Thank 
Right, the next item is the IT budget ad hoc committee update. Anna, would you mind providing? Sure. Or Ralph? Or? Ralph? Okay. No, I, I, right ahead. Okay. <laughs> so um, myself, Ralph, and Kathy and Matt, I don't remember the date. But 20th, 9th, 9th of July. July. With uh, Tom and with Kim, who's not here. Um, we were discussing the IT um, budget, how it was um, the deficit for the um, salary. Salaries, thank you. Um, and to be honest with you, I wasn't at the meeting that you guys discussed it at. So I I I wasn't there to discuss it at the meeting. But when we got there, um Tom explained that he was well aware of the deficit. And um it just happened that the IT software line item was also um in surplus. So it actually worked out well, but I believe going forward, you guys have now implemented a new um, policy. Yeah, policy. So that way, it was not happen again. But I, but I think overall, it was he was aware of it, um, and the fact that the um, IT software was not fully spent, so it worked out well. But I think going forward, that won't happen again. So if you don't mind, um, no. one of the main things that we were concerned about was the $40,000 surplus. Right. And based on knowing how much software costs and all, how did we come up with $40,000 more? And so we reached out to Ryan and he explained that um, some of the computers and all are so old or were so outdated, they couldn't even take the update for the software. So they didn't have to spend the money on the updates. Um, which made a lot of sense. And he was able to break it down, I mean, line item by line item, mm -hmm. which was fantastic. But I don't think we can rely on getting $40,000 every year. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, they, they've taken care of that. And like I said, going forwards, any computers that have to be updated will be, so the software will be able to, to keep up to date. Great. <clears throat> Anything else? No, all right. That's a good recap. And we move on to item C, which is the Affordable Homes Act allowing accessory dwelling units. This was just more of a informational thing that'll be coming, I'm sure, as a topic of discussion for future council and planning board meetings. But um, Governor Healy uh, recently signed the Affordable Homes Act into law, which essentially allows accessory dwelling units by right. Um, and of course, presently, our bylaws had more restrictions on that. So there will be some amount of change, I'm sure, that will be coming forward. But that doesn't go into effect state law-wise until sometime in early February. So at the moment, in East Long Meadow, it's still not allowed by right until changes are made. So just as a form of communication for the public. And those discussions have already begun in planning. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So, Connor, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, so through the planning department, are they going to be holding public hearings and stuff with regards to this? I know um, I'm already receiving phone calls, questions, um, concerns, um, especially based on an accessory use. Current bylaw allows an accessory dwelling to be five feet from the property if it's 10 feet behind the house. Mm -hmm. And the concern is, oh, my God, I'm basically going to have a mini house right next to my property line. And what if I want one there? And then they're only 10 feet apart. And I mean, there's hundreds of questions that just right. erupted from all of this. So. And, and honestly, we haven't dug deep yet enough to, to but we will be looking at all of all of the requirements in all of the zone to make sure. Obviously, we have to do whatever we're required to do by law, by statute. But um, I think there's probably, like most things, room for the towns right. to do what they need to do with their zoning. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah. So the planning direct director, um, Rob Wachilla, has a presentation planned for the planning board on September 17th at their second meeting of the month. No. Um, and it'll just be an overview um, because, of course, the details for how we want that to look locally. Um, we have until February to figure out those contours. Thank you. Thanks, Connor. Sure. 
moving forward now, this isn't going to surprise anybody, but I'm really concerned about this change. And um, do we as a town have any leverage at all legally in terms of establishing our own criteria, perhaps restrictions? I mean, they've said no owner occupancy allowed by right. You can have a house on every lot. And where does um, our um, home home rule legislation come in? Yeah, so we have any options before us? Most of these questions were asked at our we we uh, they, uh, there's planning department meeting every Tuesday morning, and most of these questions have already come up. So our attorney is pouring through the legislation Thank now Thank to find out where we can move and where we can't. There's oh my. Yeah, I, well, I know you are, Ralph. <laughs> Makes for good reading on the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> All right, if there's nothing else, we will move on to public hearings. It is now 6 16 spring time. So, this is for putting a liquor license change of stock interest for a shaker bowl. Just kept. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. I haven't seen you in a couple of months. Yeah. Missed you guys. <laughs> ah, so let me just open that. So this is a public hearing for a liquor license change of stock interest for Shaker Bowl Inc. Located at 168 Shaker Road. The council members mm -hmm. present are Jim Layden, Kathy Hill, Anna Jones, myself, Connor O'Shea, Marilyn Richards, and Ralph Page. And I would ask the clerk to read the legal notice into the record. Notice is hereby given under Chapter 138 of the General Laws that Shaker Bowl Incorporated DBA Shaker Bowl at 168 Shaker Road East Slung Meadow has applied for liquor license change of stock interest. The town council will hold a public hearing on the application on Tuesday, August 13, 2024 at 615 in the Council on Aging Media Room, 328 North Main Street, East Slung Meadow, Mass., the hearing can also be attended via Zoom webinar for the council, Gina Quagletti, town clerk, clerk of the council. Great. Thank you, Jeannie. Mm -hmm. And I will now open it up to uh, <laughs> members from Chair Yep. Uh, so my name is Josh Goldstein, uh, attorney from Bacon Wilson, and I'm here on behalf of Shaker Bowl. And I'm Adam Oliveri here representing the ownership group. Good to see you guys tonight. Yep. Uh, so this is a very, uh, fairly straightforward transaction uh, between a husband and wife. Uh, wife was a silent investor is transferring uh, her 7% ownership interest to her husband, um, who will also be a, a silent investor uh, for nominal consideration. The, the, um, they're not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the business. This is more of a technical change and procedural change rather than any actual changes to the operation of the business. Um, tr transfer has no actual impact there. Um, so that's, it's fairly straightforward in that regard. Great. And since this is a public hearing, I will now open it if there's anyone in the audience that would like to offer input, if you could state your name and address and your comments. All right, seeing none, I will then close the public input portion of the hearing. Is there anything that the council would to ask or discuss? Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I make a motion to close public hearing. I'll second that. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Do we have to do roll call? I don't know if John's present. Yeah, yeah I'm present. present. He's, he's no. No. not present, then there's no roll call. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell us. Okay. Right. And then we'll entertain a motion to approve. I move to approve the liquor license change of stock interest application for Shaker Bowl Incorporated doing business as Shaker Bowl at 168 Shaker Rolled. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. You're all Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Have a great Thank day. We'll move on to number eight orders of the day. And licensing matters. Number one is a disciplinary hearing for Elmcrest Country Club due to noncompliance with town departments. Let's 
So, yeah. sorry, we couldn't hear you back oh. there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will try to speak up. <laughs> Very happy to hear back there. All right, so this, this time it's a hearing to the discipline uh, for Elmcrest Country Club non-compliance with town departments. So it's a little bit of context back on July 19th, before I had drafted a letter and sent it to Elmcrest Country Club to notify them of this hearing before us tonight on August 13th. And this is to consider uh, essentially revoking or not renewing the liquor license that Elmcrest Country Club holds due to various non-compliance issues with town departments and supporting documentation was sent with that letter as well. And it was all sent with certified mail and receipt to our town clerk. Um, Kathy is the chair of the licensing committee. Is there any additional uh, um, well, some the the context is uh, is uh, substantially uh, detailed. Uh, some seven years ago, the country club experienced an unfortunate uh, fire on the premises due to careless disposal of smoking materials. Um, and then also later that month, the building had a fire, which was caused by an overloaded electric cord. All of both of those events rendered the uh, property um, uh, not able to be used, certainly. Keep my glasses on to look at my notes here. Uh, electricity and utilities were shut off to the property per fire regulations of course on the 21st i'm sorry the april the 12th of 2021 the fire department issued an order of notice uh regarding several violations uh one of which is the uh storage of flammable uh liquids that had not not up to that point been addressed uh in 2022 it uh, what became uh, known to the fire department that the facility owner had completed demolition work of the damaged portions of the building without taking out permits through the town. Uh, the work ex removed the existing fire protection sprinklers, alarms, sheetrock, drop ceilings, several interior wall partitions and interior stairs. Uh, at this point, the building was rendered unsafe and the fire department marked the four building sides with a four foot by four foot red X. That's a universal um, sign uh, known in the fire industry as a dangerous situation, which uh, instructs firefighters not to enter such a structure regardless of the uh, severity of the uh, fire, if were there to be one. Because of that, again, um, because the fire uh, suppression uh, system was removed without permit or written per permission from the uh, fire department, uh, that directly violated Mass General Law 14827A, uh, to this day, no permit has been uh, issued or <clears throat> approved for the removal um, from the Office of the Fire Department. Uh, fast forward to January of 2024, members of the Fire Department, Building Department, Town Council, and Health Department met with the um, owners of the um, Elmcrest Country Club, uh, David Flurry, and um, discussed the conditions of the property and what the plan that was going forward because the uh, facilities present there prefabricated um, small buildings, much like the, the uh, pre made sheds you see on. Oaks property was being used as uh, like a pro shop, as well as a storage and serving place for um, beverages. The 
building commissioner found that the building, that particular structure was in noncompliance. It had not had what I believe is regarded to a 304 inspection. Ralph, does that make sense? Yep. And what that means escapes me right now. However, it, one has not occurred. Um, the health department uh, director said that the facility was not in compliance um, to the uh, extent that a food permit, uh, food and beverage permit could be, a non-alcoholic beverage permit could be issued. And of course, the fire department reiterated its concerns about uh, the un safe conditions of the um, burnt property um, notwithstanding. And I was not present at that meeting, but my understanding is Mr. Fleury indicated that there was interest on his part. Uh, and attorney, please, uh, if I'm misstating anything, uh, please say so, uh, <laughs> that he had some intent to move forward um, to uh, make the property suitable for whatever his next plans were. And there was a sentiment that he was going to be approaching the planning board to ask for a, a site review for his special permit. Um, long story short, in seven years, the, the all alcohol license, which allows the serving of um, alcohol, beer, and wine on premise uh, has not really been fully utilized. Uh, the owner has had multiple opportunities to reach out to the town to uh, rectify the situation. And um, we're at this juncture that it does not, there's no outward appearance that um, any substantive move to improve or alter the premises uh, is being undertaken. So it was the recommendation of the um, licensing subcommittee that the council uh, revoke this uh, license and, and take it back to the town, which brings us to tonight's hearing. Thank you for the overview, Kathy. You're welcome. Um, I'll now open it up to you if you'd like to offer any. Good evening, Benjamin Coyle on behalf of the licensee. I have one of the principals here with me tonight, Mr. Gregory Linden Moot. Um, <clears throat> the summary is very accurate. Um, and it was at this uh, golf season, is the first golf season that the golf course hasn't been open. That was a very difficult decision for uh, the ownership to make this year. It wasn't one that was made lightly. But given all the factors that were involved, it determined that from a business perspective, it was not going to be able to open this year. In the last meeting that uh, this council had, I appeared on behalf of the licensee, had just been retained. Um, since that time, um, I've had multiple discussions with the ownership group, and they completely understand the town's concern with the use of the license. They also understand that they're not going to be able to open and utilize this license in the immediate future. That is just a reality that they have had to face. It's not one that they take lightly. It's one that they wish they could change. Um, they were a victim of circumstance with litigation and everything that ensued relative to the multiple fires that occurred at the property. With all of that said, and knowing that this council um, would like to see the license utilized, the licensee would like to propose the option to attempt to sell the license between now and the uh, renewal time for the license. In the event that it's unable to enter into a, an agreement to sell the license between now and then, it will voluntarily relinquish the license back to the town and will not seek to renew it. It is the hope that they will have a plan with regard to the golf course and proposed uses and the overall scheme of what they're going to do there within the next few months or, or maybe even years, because it's going to take time in order for that to occur. Knowing that the town is at its quota 
based on our discussion last time, I think this is the only license that really isn't being used and there aren't any available based on our discussions last time. That in the event that their plan is to open up a golf course and to utilize a license at that premises, that we may be back before this council to seek special legislation to get an additional license for that property. It is intricate to a golf course to have the ability to serve alcohol. And, and in the event that they continue on with the golf course, they're going to need that. And I understand that nothing can be bound by this board to another or this council to another council, but it would be our hope that the town in general would look favorably on that application and would assist the, in the pursuit of getting an additional license in the event that that comes to fruition. So the proposal is that we have the opportunity to sell it. And of course, it would have to change location, right? It's not going to happen there. And then in the event that we're unable to do so by the end of the year, the town gets it back. We won't renew it. And Ben, thank you. Sure. Uh, and Greg Lindenmuth again, and I do represent the, the ownership. And the comment that you made um, on on the seven years, I can completely understand it from the town standpoint. But um, what Elmcrest went through and what we went through for the last seven years, it was almost a David and Goliath event against Philadelphia Insurance Company. And it expended all of our time, all of our resources. At the end of the day, I, I wouldn't say that we prevailed over Philadelphia, but we hit a good spot. And that is behind us uh, last year, which has enabled us to refocus on really the, the future potential of the property and allows us now to refocus on that before it, we were just didn't have the resources available um, at all and, and, and did our best uh, to communicate with the town. But even we didn't know the future direction of the business because of uh, the situation itself at hand. Are there any counselors with any discussion? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Sure. So through the chair, um, Jeannie, correct me if I'm wrong. This license wasn't renewed, although they applied for it. Um, they never signed off on it because they didn't meet the criteria of the businesses. That's so right. Currently, you don't have a license. Well, I, I did check the ABCC's website, and it does say that the license is, it has been renewed and that it expires on 12-31-2024, according to the ABCC's website. My understanding is that the license was renewed, but wasn't issued because it wasn't in compliance. That's more accurate. That's accurate. Mm -hmm. what, what you just described. Okay. And so the check that they sent in, we cashed? No. No. Never cashed it. We held on to it. Yeah, we, we don't. As was we held on to the license also. So without paying for a license... The ABCC still says that they have a license. Yeah, because probably renewed blanket wise with the others right. for the ABCC. I think the issue would be that it's renewable, but the sub issue is, uh, at least by our, the, this town's bylaws, that in order for it to be issued, it must, all conditions must be met. Con, you know, compliant conditions. Must it relies with the local licensing authority, which is you to actually issue that physical license. Correct. You need to have that on hand to have any deliveries. Uh, absolutely. So the license was renewed, but just not issued. And we can't get it issued until we're, we provide a certificate of compliance. Right. We can't provide a certificate of compliance until we bring the building up to code. And right. so I, I believe it's been renewed and it's just just hasn't issued. So it's still a viable license that could be sold in the event that we find a buyer. Do you have a sense, I'm sorry, through the chair, uh, that there might be a potential customer out there for your? I believe that there's some interest out there. I, I represent a lot of, of restaurateurs. Mm -hmm. um, I believe, uh, and, and I, I've also been in contact with a consultant or advisor who is a broker for liquor licenses throughout the Commonwealth. So uh, we'll, we'll hopefully get some interest in it um, because they they did expend money when they purchased it. So to just relinquish it or have it revoked, they're going to lose out either way. So giving them giving the opportunity to try to recoup some of the, the losses 
would definitely be in their interest. And I still think would benefit the town because ultimately if the, someone comes to the town and says, we're looking for a liquor license, I'll give you my card. Call them, have them give me a call. About that. Hi. Hi. Um, at your at your last at when you at the last meeting when you spoke on behalf of the applicant mm -hmm. or Elmcrest, I thought you mentioned something that it was a long struggle, but you finally got the insurance money from the from the fires that took place. Why did you let the property go to pot? It's not a golf course anymore. It's a it's a it's a field. The grass is this high. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there was a farmer out there mowing the grass and rolling it for hay. And so to bring that golf course back to its pristine condition, which it was in, mm -hmm. is going to take a lot of money. A lot of it, money. It will. Um, now, you mentioned that um, you would like to sell the license. Now, I'm not a lawyer. And I will tell you that. In my experience with the town, I mean, the town has issued X number of licenses that we provide to an applicant who is going to utilize that license on the, the property that's being licensed. You're asking us to let you take this license and barter with anybody who was interested in a license, and we don't even know where that will be. Well, th they would have to come back before this council. I realize that. Sure. So, I mean, you you would still have the ability to approve a transfer and change of location relative to the license. I understand that. I just think that the town in good faith has renewed the license for a number of years, even though, yes, the golf course was open. I'm not sure how what your membership was in terms of supporting the property. But the mere fact that you let the property go to seed, it just sends a message that, you know, you're not interested in a golf course at that location. And I'm concerned that how long is this license going to be in your pocket until you find a suitable person to sell it to? Um, well, and I learned earlier on <clears throat> that we don't have pocket licenses. Now, that's what I was socializing years ago. Now, maybe the, the philosophy has changed, but I would be more inclined to vote to revoke your license this evening without prejudice and have you folks work hard on just determining what you're going to do with the property. Um, it may not be a, a nine hole golf course with something else. It may be who knows. You may want to come back for a zone change and put condos there. You may, you know, I mean, there are lots of opportunities. I mean, it's a beautiful piece of land, but it's going to take time. And we've already sat on this for a long time. And it's not fair to other folks. If they want to buy, the, if they want to purchase a license through the town, then they should. Um, like you did when you came to the town. But we didn't charge you $50,000 for the license when you came to the town. Well, the town didn't own it. No. Right. So oh, I'm, they, they I'm purchased saying, it. They purchased it as part of the transaction. Pretty close to that amount. Right. Right around yep. thirty thousand dollars. And and I understand you. You when you were quite when you took the the property through the auction. Is that what you're saying? Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. But the initial license. So I'm. Not, you know they come. What's what's the license fee for? Um, Twenty two hundred. Twenty two. That's the renewal fee. There's there's no fee to the town to apply for a new license. Right. Renewal fees come up after. Right. Okay. I'm just. Personally, I think that you need to show us that you're really serious about doing something with the property to bring it into compliance, to sell it to someone who has um, the, the resources to be able to bring the property up to the standard that it deserves. And, and I just want to clarify a few things. The, the first comment, the pocket license, you don't know when, you know, how long we're going to hold it. My suggestion to the council was give us until the end of this year to until the renewal time. If at that point we don't have an agreement to sell it, we relinquish it back to the town. So we're really looking for a three and a half, three months. When When's the renewals due? Come, November 30th? November 30th, they have to be signed by. So if we don't have an agreement by November 30th, we're not going to renew it. We're not going to submit a renewal application for the license. So it's a finite period of time to address that concern. 
your other concern relative to the, the fees associated with the license, to the extent that the town had another license and an, an applicant came to the town and said, we want to open up a restaurant or a bar, the town can't charge more than the, the annual fee. So to deprive the, the current owner of the license, the ability for a three month period, three and a half month period to try to sell the license, I think is do, just doing a disservice to them in trying to allow them to utilize the license because the town would be in the same position either way. Connor? Okay, sure. So what would happen if the license was revoked is the town council has the power to do that. The ABCC simply needs to be notified and that license number would be dead, but it would allow an available license for somebody to come apply for a new license, just like everybody else would. Right. Do you have a sense, Jeannie, of, of any interested parties in the past saying if one were to become available on all the alcohol license? No, I'm not aware. People call for the off-premise, like the package store. Package like store. Room. Never available. The they have a greater market for that. Right. So if you're a good chair, sir. So I just want to clarify a few things. Obviously, the fire happened years ago. Um, this town and the planning board has, in my opinion, bent over backwards trying to help mm -hmm. out. We've allowed um, a tent to be used. We've allowed a little storage shed to be used. Um, but the license is a restaurant license is what we consider it because our bylaws do not allow an all alcohol on-premises license without the service of food and a full menu. Well, Nothing personal. There, there's really the banquet facility was closed. A full menu was packaged sandwich in a refrigerator that truthfully I looked at and they were still in there from last August. No one's buying those. And I mean, we allowed that. We we were hoping to work with you to that the horse would get back on its feet and all. And we've done this for multiple years. And at some point we have to say, okay. We've already done our job. We've already tried to work with you. I know the situation stinks. Um, <clears throat> but I think it's time to move on from this. I mean, literally, I think back in January when I brought it up, we should have moved on from it. Um, and I would just make a comment to the council going forwards. I don't think we should sign any licenses that don't meet all the criteria at that time. Um, we should not be renewing and holding in abeyance. Um, if they don't meet the criteria, Springfield does it. And you know what? You lose your license, and then you can reapply once you meet the criteria. I would say going forwards, we should consider that. Um, but I do think we've done everything. Um, I understand their position. Of course, they'd like to sell the license and try and make some money off of it. Um, who wouldn't? But we've held it so long. I think it's time to move on. My thoughts. Thank you. I also think, um, I think last month we were ready to revoke it. But I think, um, Mr. Coyle, when you came in, you had um, mentioned that your client wasn't available, but you guys were going to come tonight. And he, I, I think, I'm pretty sure I remember this correctly, that, you know, there are plans and you were going to present them to mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't really think this is what we were expecting. I think we were actually expecting some type of. Well, and, and in speaking with the ownership group, um, the reality is that after my discussion with this council, that nothing was going to happen to get this license up and running within a short period of time. And I know that's what this council was looking for. We, I could have brought plans and we would be here. And, and I think um, Mr. Page, you said it. We're going to be two years until you get the place up and running, even if you bring plans next next month. So that's why I've offered a different solution to the to the issue. And I think it's one that still benefits the town in general and doesn't deprive the, the town with the ability to utilize the license in the event that there's someone that wants to, to purchase the license. And it hasn't been used, and I understand that there's been a long history, but it's only not been in use for eight, eight, eight months. In, in the grand scheme of things, there's case law in the ABCC that says, if a place is closed down for six months, you, you, you have at least six months to be able to try to sell 
a, a license. You can't just take it after six months. We're at eight months and 13 days. We're at over a year because last August, Elmcrest closed. I, I was there. They put the gates up. Um, from what I understand, the last of the league moved out to a different golf course and and that was it. So so although you're saying it, this is the first full year it hasn't been open, uh, in all due respect, last year wasn't much of a golf course. Um, the people were hoping, they were hoping that the settlement came through. They were hoping that the course would uh, um, be taken care of um, so that they could utilize it. I mean, this town loves Elmcrest. I mean, we have a huge history going way back. And um, like I said, I just think, I think from a town's perspective, we've done more for Elmcrest trying to help out the best we can. Anyone else have any other comments? I just made one question. Has there been any communication with the residents next door in terms of what's going on or any potential plans or just hey, hang in there with us, any type of back and forth with the people that live in and around that property? Uh, no, how much? Okay. No, I, I certainly, I certainly uh, hear your your sentiments, and um, from a resource standpoint, we're, we're at the point now where yes, we do have resources, and and we stand one hundred percent behind Elmcrest. One thing we do know is golf very well, and you it, the. The property may look worse than it is last year, but it's just like having a beard and, and shaving it off. The, the core golf course is in uh, good shape underneath. Uh, and we're using this time rather than uh, running the business this season is to focus on the future potential and our opportunities and the town's opportunities with the property as well. So um, and, and longer term looking out, I see us uh, uh, coming back to the town if clearly the the end of the we, we clearly in the future won't have a liquor license here and we didn't want to present plans as ben had mentioned to to waste your time because we want to come to the town with defin more definitive plans than just rough plans um uh, right now today it would have been too early for us we're still working on it and we'll be coming to the town um but as we we look forward um, would likely come back to the town in pursuit of uh, a liquor license in the far in the future when we're when the town's ready and we're ready as well. So those plans are are still in our our longer term. Great. One more comment, please. Um, a few years ago, and um, Jonathan Torsh is not here, but he said it was like six years ago. Yep. Um, and he was on the planning board that you folks went before the planning board for a waiver of site plan review for some modifications that you were going to do on the property. And at the time, um, the planning board and their, you know, with their wisdom felt that what you were proposing really required a site plan, a full site plan. And you left with the understanding, and we understood that you would be coming back with a full site plan and you never came back. You never came back. Hmm, I, and that was years ago. Yeah, I don't all us having uh a, you don't remember what that was? Before the fire, any plans um to change the, the Elmcrest facilities. I know it was focusing on the if you're looking at the the golf the club on the right hand side, an elevator was going to be put in, you were going to do bathrooms, you were going to be do you were going to do something yep. to the um yep. The 19th hole? Or that, that's, when, that's when we were going right. for the insurance company just closed the account. That was the, the two-year period that we were making progress with the insurance company. All the elevator was code upgrades. And believe it or not, that started some of the problems, like the elevator, because it took up most of the restaurant area. And, the, and the, the insurance company was unwilling to give us the same space for the restaurant. So the restaurant got very small. Uh, it just the elevator was just very demanding. And so they wanted to keep the exact same footprint would not budge off of that. But we also had to do all the code upgrades and we were required to do an elevator upgrade. But we just wanted to have the restaurant space uh, for for the patrons, the same amount of space. Yeah, I understand. And so, yes, we, we were um, we hired engineers and we were coming to the town. We were th there and then everything stopped with them. 
and I don't want to get into into the, that that complaint, but it was it was pretty unfair and deceptive on us what they did to us. Mm. It really was. And I can't even I wouldn't wish this on anybody. Unfortunately, my parents are going through it right now. They had a house fire. It is awful dealing with insurance companies. I often think that, especially on the commercial side, they're almost designed like not to pay people out like I can't I can't even explain it. But going through the court process, and I respect what Ben does, uh, but that was that was not fun. It was extremely expensive to, for Elmcrest, extremely expensive and time consuming on all the partnerships to battle this company with seemingly unlimited resources. Um, and, and we do not do not are looking to profit off of sale of uh, the liquor license. Uh, we're just looking for some like cost recovery that we have into it. It just helps us. It helps the whole business longer term, and the golf course itself, because all the all those proceeds go back into the golf course. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I guess my final comments would be: I I see the struggle that uh, you guys have gone through, and it's definitely not something that anyone would wish upon you. And I definitely want things to uh, improve on your behalf, but at the same time, from the town's perspective, it seems like this has been an ongoing, never ending process. And I think we just have to have a conclusion sooner rather than later. And even though three months doesn't sound like a long period of time, we've already kicked the can down the road so far with so many different accommodations. So I wouldn't be in favor of continuing the license beyond tonight. That said, is there any further comments? I'll entertain a motion. I'd like to make the motion, please. Sure. Um, I move to revoke Elmcrest Country Club's all alcohol on premises liquor license without prejudice due to their noncompliance with town departments. Second. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? We will roll call vote for this one. Yeah. Aye. Kathy? Yes. Anna? Yes. I'm a yes. Marilyn? Yes. And Ralph? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Did you read this? I wrote no. <laughs> Our next item on the agenda is uh, approval of a one day entertainment license for the East Lamado Cultural Council for the Arts and Brew Festival. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to uh, speak, I'm having a really hard time hearing you. So, can you sure. repeat it? Uh, sure, it's just about the uh, Arts and Brew Festival. So, if you want to come forward to the yeah. you want me to come table, up? sure. Mm -hmm. If you could also just state your name and address. Uh, thank you. So we are having our third annual Arts and Brew Festival. The first year we had it at Brew Practitioners. It was great, a little windy, but we really had a successful day. Our second year, it was a deluge. I don't know if you remember that rainstorm, but I think there was a space about this big that didn't get wet. So we had to cancel that day and then there's no rain date. So um, it, we, we exist on a grant. So everything that we paid for, we lost that. We are having our third show, the August 24th. And so far, everything's in place. We have musicians, we have food trucks, we have artists, mm -hmm. authors, 12 to 5. Got a grant from the town, very generous grant. Thank you. So I don't know what else you need to know from me. Everything's falling into place really nicely. As long as the weather cooperates, we're good. State your name and address for the record. State your name and address for the record. My name is Jane Riley, 357 Pinehurst Drive, East Lang Meadow. Great. Thank you. Can I ask a sure. Jane, Jane, do you know if um, the Norcross House might be having a tag sale on the same day or if there's any other activity going on that you could sort of, you know, send people to, you know, them and they send people to you? Yeah, that happened the first year. So that was good. We got no cross people and we sent people to no cross, but that was in June. So I don't know of another event that day. Slang that out. There may be something across the street at the depot. They seem to have a lot of activity and that's in the same area. Uh -huh. So that would be wonderful to just have people spend the whole day there, go to different things. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. There's no further discussion. I'll entertain a motion. Okay. I'm done. 
Yes. <laughs> I will uh, make the motion. I make a motion to approve a one day entertainment license for the East Long Meadow Cultural Council for the Arts <clears throat> Brew Festival, 45 Baldwin Street, August 24th, 2024, from 12 to 5 p.m. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Great. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Then our next item is approval of a one-day liquor license for St. Paul the Apostles Church. Is there a motion? I move to approve a one-day liquor license for St. Paul the Apostles Church, 235 Dwight Road, for a wedding reception on August 17, 2024, from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. So our next item under licensing matters is update on the APC's hearing. Okay. Is that something you would like to as the license? I, I yeah. can give the update, certainly. Um, it is a common practice of the ABC to make routine compliance checks with all licensees throughout the Commonwealth. And uh, back in mid-March of this year, a compliance check was initiated at the Tudor House. And unfortunately, the check yielded a failure on the part of the attendant at the cash register to um, check the ID of the purchaser who was not uh, 21 years of age. So that yielded a violation and the violation yields a hearing. The hearing was held in mid-June, Jeannie? June? Mm -hmm. Early June, yeah. And uh, just recently, the ABCC rendered its decision. Uh, and the decision was to, sim I shouldn't say simply because it still is a violation, but simply in the sense of the severity of the consequence. And they rendered a letter of warning to the licensee uh, to, you know, be much more vigilant. Um, the owner of the Tudor House appeared at, um, on online. All of the hearings are done uh, remote uh, and expressed his, you know, um, concern that they had indeed made uh, committed a violation and has uh, given his word that his employees would be much more vigilant. And, uh, and in truth, to, to date, he has never uh, suffered a violation in all the years that he's owned the license, which is why I suspect perhaps just the warning was um, issue, a written warning was issued. We've had other circumstances in town with other licensees in past years where there were violations and they, the particular establishments had somewhat of a history with violations. So um, the ABCC is uh, not merciful when you start to develop a track record and has the authority to render a variety of um, consequences. Um, and so uh, in, in this particular situation, the status is that the Tudor House received a warning and we move on. Okay. Right. Thank you for the update. You're welcome. So we have no financial matters this night. So approval of minutes, I will entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the July 9th, 2024 open session minutes. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That's true. <clears throat> so old business, we have our first item, approval of the town manager goals. Uh, Marilyn, Jim, and John Torsha were on the subcommittee to review the goals. The chair of the committee, so I'll ask her to provide the overview for us. Thank you, Connor. Okay, the town council town manager 
evaluation subcommittee met on August the 7th um, to review the 19 goals that were submitted by our colleagues on the council. Um, we went through each goal and actually it triggered some very interesting conversation. And I found it to be a really, really good meeting. Um, it was difficult because every goal has its value. However, we recommended four for our town manager to tackle over the next year. And I will tell you that um, the first three had multiple um, suggestions from other counselors. So in some way, we've all sort of been on the same page, which is nice. Um, so I will read you the goals that we chose to um, ask Tom, Tom um, Christensen as our town manager to tackle for the next year. The first one is building space usage and needs assessment plan. The town has made great progress on the space needs at Town Hall with the acquisition of 382 North Main Street. A plan should be developed that addresses the shift in usage of office space between the two Town Hall buildings, potential future uses of the existing Town Hall at Center Square, all town buildings and departments and their needs, including but not limited to police and fire departments, priority and general timing, for example, short term, three to five years, five to 10 years, 10 to 20 years of recommended actions. Order of magnitude costs, for example, 100,000, 1 million, 10 million, 100 million. <laughs> And potential, I, I'm sorry, I had to leave that. <laughs> and potential funding sources. The plan should consider regular repairs, maintenance, renovation, addition, replacement, consolidation, and location. We suggest that a committee be formed with the appropriate skill sets and not be comprised of a majority of town employees. Second goal. Road Improvement Plan. The council recognizes how expensive it is to properly maintain our roads. However, the condition of well-traveled roads in town have deteriorated in recent years. Conduct a needs assessment of town roads and create a five-year plan for its implementation that addresses repaving of roads, updating the sidewalk plan and completing more connections for pedestrian safety, considering upgrades or redesigns of busy intersections, updating and simplifying language throughout town, oh, I'm sorry, signage throughout town, priority general timing of recommended actions and order of magnitude costs and potential funding sources. The third goal, capital stabilization fund. This idea came about during this town's, during this past year's budget process. We recommend that a capital stabilization fund be established along with recommendations for its funding for the next five years. If leftover or smaller amounts can be set aside in a dedicated capital stabilization fund over the course of a few years, it may help the town accomplish some of the larger ticket products, projects, excuse me, that come from the recommendations out of goals one and two, among others. And the last goal um, is number four, car break-ins and theft strategy. Crime is a popular topic among residents, especially on social media. The council recognizes the hard work that our police department does to protect our residents. How can we address car break-ins, theft, and other petty crimes, either through additional resources or technology? So that be it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn. I would just add that it was definitely difficult to narrow it down to four goals because there were a lot of great ideas that we all had submitted. Um, but there was definitely a lot of consensus among the top three or so on the direction of town over the next year that we'd like to see. Um, we also included four uh, goals because we figured the first three were things that 
Tom would especially directly be responsible for, whereas the fourth, while he would be responsible for, would probably most likely have a lot more of a public safety and like police chief involvement. So may not be as I'm consuming on his part as the the first three. <laughs> because we work on time management. Of course. <laughs> they were trying to be considered. <laughs> Is there any uh, questions on the, the goals from any counseling? Good. You had a question? <laughs> no. Uh, I, the top three were probably on my list too. Um, and I'm interested about uh, the fourth one. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm, it's all doable. <laughs> Great. If there's no further discussion, I'll entertain a motion to approve the goals. Um, I make a motion to approve the town manager's goals as presented. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? <clears throat> Seeing no. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Our second is the proposed amendment to traffic rules and regulations adding no parking on both sides of Melwood Avenue from Maple Street to Savoy Avenue from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, so I suppose, Tom, would you provide some context on how this came about before the town? Surely. Um, so the um, site plan approval decision um, for the new high school, um, as with most uh, decisions, written by uh, the planning board or voted on by the planning board um, has conditions of approval. Um, and I'll read condition uh, E uh, voted on by the planning board. No parking signs shall be placed on Susan street, Norton street and both sides of Melwood Avenue. Um, of course, uh, administratively uh, there are some boxes to check before that can happen. Uh, the traffic rules and regulations would have to be voted on and changed to create no parking areas. Um, and then obviously putting signs in is a whole other follow wax. But so basically, um, regardless of um, whose decision it is to make a no parking area, uh, it's sort of triggered us to uh, have this discussion about creating a no parking area in our traffic rules and regs for Melwood. Uh, Susan Street and Norton already are no parking, uh, no on-street parking anytime. Um, uh, Melwood is not. Um, so we would be creating that area. And of course, the uh, hours and or um, how far up and down Melwood we want to go is your prerogative. So uh, we would just wanted to have the conversation. Um, when we had the conversation last time, the council agreed that it was probably a good idea to um, get the input from the abutters. And it sounds like that message was received. <laughs> so we didn't waste any postage, which is good. <laughs> um, so I think just sort of kind of getting the input of, let's face it, those would that would be affected by this the most um, to see what if any hours we should put on this or if we shouldn't do this or we should. Um, there's obviously pros and cons to all, but um, it's easy for me to say, uh, I don't live there, I don't park there. So um, I think again, with most of our initiatives these days, I think it's a good idea to get as much public input as we can before we make a decision. So that's where we're at. Great, thank you, Tom, for the overview. So at this time, I'll ask if there's anyone in the audience that would like to provide comments on it, whether you're for or against or questions, um, if you would come forward to the microphone at the table and state your name and address for the record. Fun to us. All right. Cassandra Share Soil, 15 Mallet Um, I think we need it. Uh, I've lived there for several, well, I lived on Melwood almost my entire life, but now I live at this end of the street and I've lived there for seven years and it is a problem. It's always been a problem um, during the start of school and the end of school where people park on both sides of the street. And I don't know if you've driven down Melwood, but at our end of the street, it's a little bit more narrow than the other end. So when there's a car parked on both sides, it's difficult for one car to get down, just a normal passenger vehicle. And then you take into account the kids crossing the street to get to their parents' cars 
parked on our street. And oftentimes they're either walking through our lawns, which I don't have a problem with, or they're walking in the middle of the street. Then you have the high school students speeding down the street, Wait. us trying to get to our homes or to leave our homes. And heaven forbid, there's an emergency vehicle that needs to get through because we do have a lot of elderly people that live on our street. And it's pretty frequent that we have ambulances or other emergency vehicles come down. There's no space. And I'm very much for the hours. That's fine. Because <clears throat> as one of my neighbors, I believe Emily, she's not here. Like if you have people over, there shouldn't be no parking all the time. But the, also the problem comes down to enforcement because technically on our street, there are two no parking signs at the very beginning, like right at the mouth. And people still park right there on the edge of the street, which is very dangerous when there's all that commotion. So I want the sign, like we want the signs, but we want enforcement of the signs. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> One second, on. one second. Cassie, the, the people that are parked, yeah. they're not part of car line. They're just parked and the kids. So instead of going into the horseshoe for right. to pick up their kids because there's traffic, they park on our street. OK, so but they're now this is it. What's that? What defines parking? Are they in their cars? Are their engines still running? They're idling like. Are they they're either idling or they're actually in park car off? Yeah. And then they'll like turn into our driveways to turn around. They'll sit there. They'll start lining up around like what? 115, like 105, 115. And then school gets out at 145. They're still there till 2, 215 waiting for their kids to come out. OK, so if it weren't, we could say no standing. I mean, that would. Well, this is that right. this is all part of the conversation, right? We can say whatever we want. It just has to be. But I just want to make sure that what we do is effective right. and that people say I'm not parking. I'm not parking. My right. car is running. And right. And and I think hopefully the 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 distance from the street of the new high school and the new traffic pattern is going to sort of curtail some of this anyway. But um, again, the, the conversation needs to be had. I think. Yes and yes and no, because it's a direct lineup, which we were not aware of right. until the plans came out that the driveway was going to line up directly with our street. But then also now that there's the construction happening, like right now with the school year, we just think it's going to be worse like this year while the horseshoe is closed and stuff. And the amount of times that I've seen somebody like go into the driveway that's right next to the high school's driveway, you know what I'm talking about? The house that's like mm -hmm. back and right there. I don't like exit my street, you know, 24 seven, but the few times that I do every time I've seen someone accidentally turn down that person's driveway and reverse back into Maple. So I just, I think it's going to get worse before it potentially gets better. Or yeah, better. certainly during construction. I'll, I'll agree with that. I mean, the, nobody's going to want to go anywhere near the site. Exactly. So I'm sure that, that, that it's only going to get worse now. I, I was, I guess I was talking about, um, you know, when, when the school's done, um, that's a considerable distance back from the road now than it is, you know yes. what I'm saying? And the problem of it lining up with our street, I guess is also like, well, then it will directly line up with the street. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I get, I, yeah, I get not necessarily a parking thing, but yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that could potentially create more just normal traffic. Oh, oh, well, I and I, I don't know that there was there that was mentioned through the traffic report or whatever. I, I don't I don't know. There's still going to be the same amount of students and cars. So I don't you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and again, I thought they tried to get most of those cars to get away from that driveway on on exit. Now they're they're down more towards the church. You would both. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I think that's the way it was designed, and I think that's what the traffic report bore out. But I mean, we could obviously look into that more. But yeah. yeah. So if you want to come, sorry, forward, I'm sorry. Know, yeah. I can find this wrong. So I have to go all in here. Yes, please. Please. <laughs> and if you got this, Tim Garska, live at 21 Melwood. So does the new does the new entrance and exit to the high school feed right into Melwood? Does it line up? It does line up. Ooh. Not right now, but it, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, when all is said and done, it will. So 
so with the layout, and again, it, it's again, it's probably my fault for not paying more attention to it. Is that was that the plan all along when they when they rolled this plan out for the high school? Yeah, I mean that I that was the that was the site plan that was approved. Okay. And f- as far as the traffic, like like who did the traffic pattern? Was it somebody that was local or was that the state? Uh, one of the design engineers. I don't have anybody. It would have been a subset of of uh, Jones Witz at Architects or, or SM, SMMA. I would assume the site the site design tie and bond. They subcontracted tie and bond to do it. So it was a local consulting engineering. Do we, but do we know that for sure? That it was actually somebody that did the site and looked at the site and saw the school at entrance and exit. Yeah, it's it was a requirement of the the site plan approval. Okay, and that's written somewhere in there. Yes. Yep. Somewhere. Okay. okay. That doesn't make me feel good. <laughs> if I can uh, interject, sure. um, like this, I'd like to just see it because to me, you know, living on that street for a year now, mm-hmm. trying to pull out in the morning, it's. Uh, it's tough, even when school's not there. If you go to take a left-hand turn out of the street at the high school, and someone's going to get creamed. I mean, and I, I just see with the traffic, with a direct feed going down Melwood, I would say it if I did or didn't live on the street. I really think that there's going to be a problem for the town if it just doesn't look at making an adjustment. As you were saying, I couldn't quite understand what you were saying, but if we dump the cars down more towards St. Mike's, where it's not the crest of the hill, in that in that turn, I, I just think that be that that's going to be a real problem. Yeah. So just say if it's not too late for an adjustment for a traffic pattern or no right hand turn, no left hand turn, something. I would just say to the council, with all due respect, you know, it, it's going to be a problem. Uh, yeah. So I think all this came up during the the site plan approval process. Um, we can certainly look at the numbers, but I don't know that the proposed condition showed many straight across coming out of the the horseshoe now that it lines up because most of the vehicles that are now coming out that way to sneak up Marshall or Melwood are the, the students trying to get out of the parking lot quick. Yeah. They, they they can't go that way. Now they have to go to the church. You know what I mean? So that's the exit. That's the exit now. Oh, okay. So even though it lines up, the exit's all the way down. Okay. 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 No, that was my that was my only question. Can you speak on the committee about um, signals? There were we are we putting in signals? So no, we're not. We don't have the traffic count that so warrant to warrant a traffic light there. Will there be a beacon? Or I, so, I don't remember. So now there are two crosswalks mm-hmm. on either side of that main entrance now mm-hmm. with the beacon, okay. and it's further down from the top of the hill, which I think everybody mentioned, so that. There's more time to for people flying over that hill on Maple, which they do, uh, to to see the intersection and the crosswalks. Mm-hmm. Whereas people coming out of that horseshoe now, I mean, you're at the top of the hill. I mean, it's pretty unsafe. So yeah, that's all been taken into account. Um, there'll be uh, the flashing beacons at both crosswalks, um, and again, I I feel like they concentrated most of the track the exiting traffic down towards the, the, the exit near the church. Okay. Will there be crossing guards? That I don't know. Um, Something that you could um, ask the, pol- the police department assigns crossing guards. We historically haven't had them at the high school right. because to the age of the students, but students, I mean, that certainly can be talked about for sure. However, the, the school building committee has um, spoken uh, in length about the importance, especially in two weeks when school opens up, uh, because it's it's a you know an interim plan and everybody's kind of upended to make sure that there is consistent um, police staffing there morning and you know afternoon in in that critical hour. I would have thought twenty minutes. But I, I believe you when you say some folks line up uh, 45 to 50 minutes. That, that, I'm envious of that <laughs> to pick up a 15 year old. <laughs> it's not Meadowbrook. Yeah. <laughs> However, um, and of course, when the new school is ready and it opens, we will still 
make sure that there is adequate police there because it's all um, the enforcement piece is the key. Uh, and the committee made the made the statement or or at least I did. Then enforce it. If if you get repeat offenders in the first week, give out tickets. You, that's the only way you're going to make um, a statement because this is a it's going to be a busy intersection there for the next three years until you know you're back to a new normal and people learn what the parking regs need to be. We'll make sure through the committee building committee that we emphasize the importance of um, police um, presence. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's an excellent point because this traffic pattern is going to change every year. Right. And it could, could conceivably used, change, you're going to change, change again, you know, <laughs> as you get into stages of construction, they may have to make a temporary right. uh, readjustment. It's, it's the nature of a large project. There's, no avoiding it. Right. Is there anyone else in the audience that would? I'll just say, hi, Carol Kelly, 17 Melwood. Uh, I just want to agree with what neighbors have offered here. And the no parking signs are long, long, long overdue. And But Kathleen, what you said with the enforcement of them, that's, that is the key. And I think right now with the construction going on and the children going back to school, what, in two or three weeks? Weeks. We have to put this into place now. We have to do something now because it's very dangerous when you're going down the street, particularly in the afternoon when the parents are lined up there waiting. They, they line up all the way to the corner. The other day I was down there and there was a worker truck down there and it was just like, I hope nobody's coming because I can't see. And you just... And that happens with the parents there. They're on both sides, all the way to the corner. We need the signs, but we need the enforcement for it also. So, thank you. And I don't know why this is so hard to to do. Just signs. <laughs> is there anyone else that would like to? Uh, Robert Caprill, uh, 181 Maple Street. I have the property across the street from the entrance of the high school. And we've been there for 25 years, and I'm supporting the no parking signs on Melwood. Uh, school pickup time is the worst part of the day. Parents are parking all over the street. They block the mailbox, trash pails. There's been situations where they park over the driveway. We can't get groceries in and out of the, uh, the car. Uh, they park in our driveway. We have to ask them to move high schools to descend on the property. They walk over the lawn to get to their rides. I'm not the crazy old lawn guy, but I've, I've asked them to politely uh, not walk over the grass and I've gotten sworn at, I have gotten uh, called names and I've been asked, well, what do you expect if you're living across from the high school? Um, I've had kids uh, playing football on my lawn. Uh, a, a mom came to the door and wanted to start a fight because we asked her daughter not to be on our lawn. It's private property and they have no right to be there. They leave trash behind. They collect water bottles and wrappers and that they don't want to take home with them. Uh, the parents are waiting. They see all this happening and they don't do a thing. Um, we uh, we served on the scholarship committee. Uh, we um, uh, we've been a small business in town for twenty five years. We try to generate funds for the kids, even the obnoxious ones. Um, our daughters graduated from the town, and they're both well. And we want to give back a gift. Uh, but I also expect the high school to inform the students and their parents to respect homeowner property. Walk on the sidewalk, and please stay out of my parking lot. Um, I, uh, you know, I hope that, um, you take the statement to heart, protect the area, our property, encourage respect and good civic behavior from the students and their parents, especially to newly senior, senior citizens. And, um, it, uh, it just seems like courtesy has been forgotten and maybe it has not even been taught at all. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience? We all agree. <laughs> all right. 
Is there any council comments? Oh, you can go first. <laughs> so my curiosity after reading uh, the traffic rules and regs, um, are we looking at doing this um, for the entire year? Are we looking at doing only during the school year? Um, I mean, what are the thought processes? And um, I mean, I drive up and down that street and I would be more apt to take the hours off and say no parking from here to here. Period. Period. I agree. Um, no, can't do that because of the residents that live there. What if you have a friend coming over? That's actually allowed in here. Um, oh. There's exceptions to it. If you're having a service at the house, you know, like a landscaper is allowed to park there. If you're having a delivery. About a relative. That's permissible. Okay. So what, what would you need? It doesn't specifically say that. Right. Did but you if you had a visitor there, there Kelly? and they couldn't fit into the driveway. So what oh, if so. she, she couldn't make it tonight, but I, she said she was going to email you that she wanted the hours. She would be opposed to the full day because like if she had people over, her driveway is small. If she had people over and they parked in the street, she didn't want them then getting a ticket. So I don't, I don't want to derail the conversation, but this is sort of why we were thinking about the parameters. And I think Jeannie said it almost after the first time I brought it up was, is it when school's in session, right? Like yep. on a Saturday or a Sunday, we don't need to tell people they don't have to park there because their only reason they're parking there is to pick the kids up from school. So that was a, that was why I had the hours on there in the first place, just to sort of generate the conversation. And then I'm not there all the time. So the discussion is what are the parameters that, they that the that the residents see out in the field uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and my guess is it's monday through friday seven to nine or whatever and one to three or 12 to two or whatever whatever it is um that was that was the original thought and that was so that they didn't lose their sort of on-street parking for guests i mean that that's no fun if we just say you can't park from here to here at any time um uh, how do we make it if we're going to enforce it, then everybody's getting tickets and they're going to be sorry they showed up today, which I don't want to see. Can we make the signage say something along the lines of no parking for school pick drop off and pick up? Yeah, I mean, we made the no left turn during or when car line is right. full at Meadowbrook. Right. I mean, we can make any sign we want. Um, but. Yeah, I, I don't know how wordy. Just between the hours of 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. No like Monday, Monday to Friday, 7 to 9, 1 to 3. Sure. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, I can't help but think about Parker Street for pickup at Meadowbrook, Summers Road for pickup at Mountain View, and is it Elmcrest? at Birchland for Birchland. Yeah. I feel for you guys. I completely understand because driving down Parker street, turning out of Meadowbrook is a complete nightmare. Where are these people supposed to go? And if we do this on Melwood, <clears throat> are we going to have an issue on Parker street, Summers road and Elmcrest? I yeah. think some of the difference though is like cars can kind of be I mean, on Parker street. Well, and that's what I was just thinking. Like maybe it's not as bad because it's on one side of the road. Maybe not both. Correct. So, yeah, and those are fine. these are people literally park. They park there all day long. No, they park there for forty-five minutes because of car line. But it's not a car line. But it's not a car line. This isn't. They don't have a car line at the high school. We're a side street. We're not a main street. Park on our street. Where's car line control? On Maple. It's in the loop of the circle or in the parking lot. So where so then it would go in the loop of the circle down maple no no they, they park on our street no I, I completely understand i completely understand that but when when there's more cars than fit in the horseshoe where does stop on maple so people are just coming onto our street and parking we have nothing to do with car okay so this is not this is not so there's car line on maple and there's yes pick up on melwood people on there is no car line. Technically, there's no there car, is no car line. line. But if people can't get into the horseshoe, they back up on maple. The buses go in the loop. Yeah. There are no vehicles allowed in the loop 
but they still go. But, but people need to be picked up, right? No, yes. they do it in the parking lot. So, so and so, school addresses this. Oh, so okay. Okay. Yeah, I need to get a little control and ask them to come up and sit uh, because of the microphone and all, instead of just calling from the back of the audience. Sorry. So there's no car line. There's the loop that only buses are supposed to go in, but normal cars still go in. Okay. And when that backs up, they back up on that side of Maple, like the school side of Maple, they back up. Normally, they're supposed to get picked up through the church, the the loop, the the entrance on the part the the church side there. The parking lot. Yes, <clears throat> but not everyone does that. People park on our street to avoid the traffic in both those areas. So they're not just, having to try to take a left on exactly. Maple Street at two o'clock. Not trying to get out and down uh, Westwood or wherever. Yeah, they either just head down Westwood to avoid it altogether, or they just go back out Maple. So there is a car line, but it's. If you want to call it that. If you want to call it that. If, if, and it's supposed to be through the parking lot. Through the parking lot. Not through the horseshoe at all. But people, there's there's times on the horseshoe that say no cars. People ignore that. There's supposed to be like no cars from, I think it's like 645 to like 730. And then in the afternoon as well. But people are in there with the buses. And then that line backs up on Maple. So another enforcement. Except that enforcement to me would go to school administration. Yeah. They didn't need to be school employees out there enforcing a, a parent coming in behind or getting stuck. And I've seen it lodge, be, not lodge, but between two buses where the buses they should be able to line up end to end yes. and not have a car snaking through there. And, and again, it's not just an inconvenience for the residents that live there, it's dangerous. You know, our neighbor Tim even said it's dangerous for him. It's it needs to be addressed. And um, again, it's long overdue. This parking there on both sides of the street. Yes. Uh, oh, 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 I thought I okay. was coming up. Sorry. Okay. I'll go ahead first. Yeah. Okay. Um, are we creating a problem for a, a street down one or up one, Elwood? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what's what's I don't know what's next. What goes beyond Melwood? I mean, would people start parking on that street? So, like, where Savoy comes back around, are they just going to go park on that? I mean, I don't know. I I can't. Yeah, no. I I feel like the proximity is why people park. Yeah. It's okay. right across from the high school. Yeah. Okay. And the high school is not as far back as it's going to be. But if so, they have no place to park. But there will, yeah, but there's the whole parking lot's open. Again, okay. it's a, an enforcement thing. If if or maybe you, education too, telling yeah. people that's where they need to go. So Greg Thompson, school committee chair, also a member of the school building committee. So we will have a dedicated school line or uh, school pickup for students and a dedicated bus line. There'll be two separate loops, which we don't currently have. Currently, what happens is the buses line up, the cars come in behind and then they're stuck. So they go over on Melwood because they don't have to be stuck behind the buses. The cars also come in in the parking lot, as you were saying, and try to sneak out Melwood. That's all going to go away with the new school. As Tom alluded to, the students will have to come out and be forced to go out the toward the rotary the east side yeah okay the the staff parking will be in front of the building but to the same point that tom made the new school will be basically where the soccer field is behind the school so the walking distance is not as conducive as it is now it's twice as far and we believe the car line will move rapidly because there's room not only to pull to the side but to go to the left of cars that are parked so no one's going to get stuck in there and there's plenty of room. It's much bigger than it exists now. And it's separate from the buses. So the buses have their own dedicated loop that only buses are allowed to go in. And the and the pickup line will be exclusively cars. I, I don't dismiss the no parking signs. I think that's a it's a valid point. It's a good idea. Uh, but I think it will be a little bit alleviated with the new design. We're much better designed for traffic and flow. You know, we spend a lot of time and effort on it. So it will be better. But you know, certainly it, it still makes sense um, in, in my perspective. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Any other council comments? So I just wanted to interject a little bit. I, I was talking about, you know, having it all day um, after having read further and all and listening. It sounds like setting hours to it makes more sense. And then posting signs um, saying Hey, these are the hours. And if we catch someone parking there, 
we're going to have to have our police department issuing tickets. Um, I, I know in Hamden, once you get a ticket or two, you realize, hey, the police are here and you don't do it again. <laughs> That's what happened. From a resident perspective, is there any wisdom in just no parking signs at the very beginning of the street to alleviate the, the turning concern and then further back the hours to alleviate the, uh, you know, if you have people over, things going out of your house, like a combination of it or just? I think we should have the hours. Just the hours? Because right now there there is no parking, but it's like literally just in the mouth of our street gotcha. and it still is ignored. Okay. So I don't have to go all the way down the street. They don't park all the way down the street. I think just up to the void would be fine. How far is that? I think that was the proposal yeah. was yeah. April to Savoy. Yeah. There's no further comments. I'll entertain a motion then. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so I would uh, I would make a motion that we um, change the traffic rules and regulations section five six parking locations and prohibitions by adding. Now, let me slide down. It's in red. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right there. By adding Melwood Ave under the name of street under time uh, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Under side, it will say both. And under location, it would say from Maple Street to Savoy Avenue. Okay. Is there a second? I'm sorry. Do we want to add idling to that? Or is it, do we have to well, that's, that's the, included? That, in, uh, do we have a definition yeah. of parking? That's what yeah, understood when you're in a car. No parking is no park. Well, I know that. I, but but th that's when you get so it right. Under okay. appendix. Okay. Push the if, you leave that, you get a ticket. So just for I clarification, don't. under traffic rules and regulations, uh, appendix five, which is where we're at, uh, it includes stopping, standing, and parking. Perfect. Perfect. That's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. Are you done? I am done. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Is it being done? Oh, Tom? So just school days? I mean, I don't know how we make that point. Or you nope, just it was it. not listed uh, that way. It, it's just, it, it's straight that I there's see. no parking from Melwood to Savoy from... 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. and 1 to 3 p.m. I think that's okay for the regular for the paperwork, but can we still have the signage say M through F? Signage say whatever, like right. Tell yeah, me so you direct it to say uh, this is what, so created the created document, the, right. right? The area is right. now no parking, correct? And whatever sign the page delineates that, yeah. that's yeah. All right, motion been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Okay, all right. Thank you. Motion carries. Happy, We'd like to happy deputize you all for the first week of school. <laughs> <laughs> Give them all patches. Stand out there. It's nice to have people here. You know, we have our meetings so many times with empty, empty seats. So don't just come. <laughs> on the agenda. Just come. <laughs> yeah, we never know what your what your agenda is, and the, and the, maybe if you, you know, I don't want you to. You want you want, to me, you want a letter from me every week? <laughs> every week. <laughs> but, uh, it's posted. It's posted on the Friday before. Right? Yeah, but we don't remember to look it off. Like, oh, let's see, they might. <laughs> 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 Thank you all for your feedback on that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. When do you think we'll get that? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Let's not push. Let's not push. Sergeant. But that, that's a practical question. Um, two weeks and the will be back. Right. We have poster board. So. Yeah, well, I think uh, we try to get the message out and uh, there's no nothing. We don't need a sign to... Um, Enforce traffic rules and regulations. But I guess uh, from a practical. We'll get a lot of, of appeals when right. it's not posted. We need a cop with the blue lights. Yeah. Yes. Right. Well, they 
we talked about that. Well, but uh, I mean, as far as the signs actually being the hole dug and put them in a, a few weeks. Oh, anyway, yeah. Okay. That was really vague. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So said, anyway, weeks or more. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess if we run into, um, you know, you, you gotta you gotta notify Big Safe. I mean, there, there's a oh, process yeah. because you can't just go start banging things in the ground. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll mention it to Daryl and Bruce tomorrow, and we'll see what we can do on the schedule. I guess in the interim, if we get to school, we can we can do the the Fourth of July no parking signs just to just so yeah. there's something it's, out yeah, there. Right, right. It's a low cost option, and yeah. I know they don't work, and they fall down, and it rains one run, time, and run. everyone's mad. But again, we can only work as fast as we can work. Um, so to put whatever that's going to be six eight signs in yep. three on three or four on each side of the street. Um, and then they're going to be fighting over who gets it in their yard. <laughs> um, but I, I'll talk to Daryl and Bruce tomorrow and we'll get a realistic schedule. I, okay. I'm not going to say we'll have them. In no, the I understand. But um, yeah, we'll see what we can do. At least get the, get them located and the dig safes called in. And then if we have the material, then we can get them in when we can get them in. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The next item under new business is approving the uh, waiver provisions of Section Five Dash Four of the Charter to appoint uh, Gene Sintolo to the Board of Library Trustees. Is there a motion? I move we approve the waiving of provisions of Section Five Dash Four of the Charter to appoint Gene Sintolo to the Board of Library Trustees. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none. Uh, can I make a small sure. comment? Is this, is this something that we want to, I mean, you, you have this right by charter. Is this something that we want to keep doing every time I make an appointment on any one of those boards that listed to have you waive? Or do you want to, I'll just mention that they're there because you don't have to do anything. If the 45 days elapses, then they're on, right? So it, I, I can appoint, you can disappoint, right? You can veto. It doesn't say that I can't appoint. So we were having this conversation internally, uh, me and Deb, because it doesn't prevent the appointment. You just afforded 45 days to disallow that appointment. Correct. So we were holding on to paperwork and these people have missed a meeting or something in the interim. When when you actually interpret the charter, the appointment can be made and they can go to that meeting. But you have the 45 days to 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 veto. And so if you want to keep doing this, I'm all for it. You know, I'm not trying to hide anything, certainly not an appointment to a board. Um, I just wanted to talk it out because I think this has been the procedure and I just kept it going. Um, yeah, it's a good question. I if, I suppose I would interpret it the same way that they could serve until such time that the council decided that they can't serve as long as it's within that 45 day period. But I suppose it doesn't say that they can't serve until we approve it. But I thought the 45 days is what we had to make the decision. We do, do but it doesn't stop the point. Like you, I guess, I oh. guess the problem or the, what, what I would try to avoid if there was um, a candidate who, for some reason, had um, an issue that we felt was not appropriate, you know, rather than appoint and then make it public and then take this person off, yeah, it would be much better to deal with it beforehand. Okay, yeah, I mean that's yeah. how that's how I thought it was. There's only five of. I mean, it, it, it's really no big deal. It's I, I'm making this a five minute item now. It's usually thirty seconds. So I mean, it's not a big deal. And and if that's the way you want to do it, I just there's all these things that I sort of inherited a process, right. and we're just asking the question because right, right. we're holding on to this document. And Deb knows if I have something on my desk for longer than two weeks, there's a good chance it's not gonna it's not gonna come back to her. So. If if the appointment paperwork could get signed immediately, what difference does that make in the process? But we'll just we'll hold on we'll hold off on an appointment. It doesn't really matter because I don't want to I don't want that decision to or that 
situation to arise that I've appointed someone that you're that you're all so dead I'm set gonna, tense. I'm not that you feel. that's going to happen. No, no, but right. I think that was the no. But that's the reason it's in right. the charter. Right. So if my interpretation of it is taking some of your comfort away from that, then forget it. We'll just do it like this. It was just it came up. We were chatting about it in the office, and I wanted to have the conversation with you. No big deal. Okay. So, so through the chair. So, Tom, when someone comes up um, for appointment or you've decided on someone, mm -hmm. is there any way you can send us immediately an email? Because I would think if a name pops up that any one of us was really concerned about, we could send a quick note back that say, I might have some concern on this one. And at that point, then you wait for the process. Okay. I mean, that would be my thought. And again, I only see this happening maybe once in every 30 years. Um, so, but considering where the government and the change and why it changed, uh, I could see, I could see it happening back seven or eight years ago. So, <laughs> so, and, and, and I guess I sort of brought it up to prompt the probably more crucial part of this conversation and that's for the four department heads that are listed in there as well probably <laughs> may increase and that's somebody's already signed a contract and we're we're engaged with an employer or employment and you can say we don't want this person to be the police chief or the fire chief or the DPW director and at that point we're down the road and and i hope this doesn't come out wrong but i you know, yeah. sometimes I don't want to be at a situation where I'm asking your permission to hire someone because that's also expressly not how the charter reads. And so there's a little contradiction there. And right. that's why I kind of wanted to have the conversation about if this is how it's going to be interpreted here, then we kind of have to interpret it over here that way, too. Does anyone have any other comments? Yeah, I mean, I see it as you should still be able to appoint whomever you wish and send us a note that, you know, hey, I'm making such and such appointment. And then that kind of starts the clock for us if we feel that that's inappropriate. And then we could take it up at our next okay. meeting to veto. You'd have to be careful not to deliberate that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. Just a meeting. <laughs> Just the notification that yeah. it was taking place. Well, and, and if there's any changes to the new schedule, a lot of these things will probably work out anyway, right? Like there won't be this, right. you know, potentially five or six weeks between meetings, the right. on right. where the dates fall. So, um, all right, fair. That That's more than fair. And this is sort of on par with our previous comments about more communication and notification right. and all that so yeah. all right so we had the motion made in second a while ago <laughs> any other discussion <laughs> being none all those in favor please say aye uh, aye any opposed so then the next item was the appointment of a town council representative to the ELHS pool committee and that was because uh, that Subcommittee had a council representative on it who was previously Matt Boucher, who's no longer on the council that represent the council. Um, so I had asked if there was anyone as a counselor that was interested. John did mention that he was interested, but I wanted to wait in case there was anyone else that was interested before recommending someone. All right, if there's no other recommendations, then John, it is. <laughs> yes. That'll teach him not to look out. <laughs> probably, how, probably how Matt got on there, too. <laughs> then our next item was the town council calendar. So this was something that sort of floated around, it seems, for a while since mm -hmm. the council's inception. And so I had put together a more formal calendar of all the different activities that we tend to undertake throughout the year, also layering in the different requirements that the charter and our bylaws and any other rules and regulations require us to do. For example, like we have to review the charter every 10 years, we have to review the bylaw every 10 years, but ending in a five, <laughs> it's like that. So that we don't lose sight of it because reading the bylaws every day, you would have no idea that we're supposed to be doing some of these things. And then also like, the first meeting of the month that we, based on our rules, is supposed to be the second Tuesday, unless it conflicts with like a holiday or election. 
all that sort of stuff. So I put that all together for all of us to reference. And then I also layered mm. in tentatively, but of course we can certainly keep it depending on the workload, a second meeting to return to having the second and fourth Tuesdays for our council meetings at 6 p.m. here. Um, I think you'll notice that like November and December, it aligns like very close to the holidays. So those may not happen. So mm -hmm. That was just a placeholder for discussion purposes. But the remainder of the months from September through June would likely have the second meeting. And then we would have just one for our summer schedule like we used to in the past. Um, so that was mostly just an overview on the schedule that I put together. But if there's any questions. We did a good job. Um, Excellent, Joe. Excellent. Thank you. So the two meetings, um, if we return to that, is that going to be basically as needed as items come up? Or is it going to be just a standing second meeting? I think it'll be standing unless we find that there really aren't enough items to warrant it. Like <clears throat> we won't end up scheduling the second one if it's just to approve minutes and talk about a town manager report. But otherwise, I think no offense, Tom. But <laughs> <laughs> well, does that mean you also want a town manager report every two weeks? <laughs> That's basically what we're looking at then. Yeah, I think there's enough that, I mean, if, our previous evaluation as a council was working on communication from last year. I don't think it hurts to update on what happened over the last two weeks. I'll make Rebecca ready. <laughs> you got the first one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. So at the end of each meeting on the first Tuesday, could you decide then if you're having the second meeting or would you want to wait? I think we would probably have a decent idea. You really have your action items for the next meeting. And yeah, if we found that there were no action items, then we mm. probably would have a good clue that we didn't need it unless, you know, something came up out of the ordinary. And it all depends on the special meeting. You can have special right. meetings. It's really, right. you're the gatekeeper, right. actually. Right. 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 You have a sense of what's uh, on the back burner. Mm -hmm. And I also envisioned as we get into budget season and some other right. matters, so especially That's with all the bylaw right. review over the next year, that we may need that second meeting more mm -hmm. as a workshop instead of regular business that's coming before us. Right. We will have quite a few bylaws, not just the 2025 bylaw review, but, you know, if there's a center town district bylaw, I mean, that's going to eat up a lot of time. Um, accessory dwelling units. I mean, these are all going to require two readings. So solar two meetings. Yeah. So <laughs> all of it. I mean, Pens will be back, I'm sure. Um, so, so that second meeting could help with a second reading, you know, especially if we're getting down to a point where, you know, we've got some serious public outcry about these bylaws um, and how long it may take us to do an accessory dwelling unit bylaw that we all agree on um, by the date that we're required to do it on. Um, you know, we've all talked about how long it takes our bylaw process and, right. you know, the subcommittees. And so, I mean, we're basically looking at in the next three months, having a bylaw in front of someone planning board, I mean, to have that thing roll out by February. So I, I don't think two meetings um, standing is aggressive. I'll just do a better job of getting those reports in on time. It was in on Thursday this week. It was. It was <laughs> We're on time. So <laughs> you can bank some of those days. And, <laughs> and I, I think, Connor, some of it's going to be um, basically up to you as you put it together, um, especially zoning bylaws, uh, going through, looking at you now, obviously they have to be advertised and stuff, and it may not make it onto the second meeting. So, you know, it's going to go on to the first meeting the next month. And, um, I'm good. I think I do like the idea of make making the call at the first meeting if we're going to have a second meeting. If we can, just yeah, we can certainly aim for it and see what happens. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. If there's nothing else on the calendar, um, any action items for the next meeting? Um, the one that comes to mind is we were originally going to have an executive session today on the pending legal matters, but given some discussions with Tom on 
some of those outstanding things, we didn't feel it was appropriate with the information that we had and what could be shared at this point, but that will be coming before us in September. So we will get back to that, but we needed a little bit more time to review and prepare. Does anyone have any other action items? Yeah, just okay. made some notes. The council vote for the adoption of the order of the taking. Will that be for September 10th? Most likely. And um, Paul Morris said wants to have a second hearing for the hazard mitigation plan. Amy Kaplan on that date. And legislative update. Did you want to do that too, September 10th? I had originally penciled that in, but I think we may push that to the 24th if we have that second meeting. Okay. That way there will give each of us counselors a little more time to prepare any questions or comments that we may have for our state reps. So I suppose in the meantime, before maybe the next meeting that we have on September 10th, if you have any questions or comments for our state reps, you could send them to Jeannie or I so we can get those funneled to them. And did you want to also put on, uh, you've got the close of the capital projects, uh, get an update on the ones that have been completed. And yes, those things penciled in from August will probably shuffle to September. <laughs> and those, a lot of those were, were done when they closed out FY24. That's part of their process now is to shoot out the, the, the emails to everybody about the existing capital projects. And if they're done, because they want to close these accounts out too. If they're just hanging around, it's just an annoying, an annoyance basically. So yeah, that that's, we can do, we can do a good update on all that. All right. Seeing none, we have no executive session. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. One move. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All, right. all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, we returned at 7.56. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.